Can we figure out mind-blowing experiments all on our own? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Today we're attempting to successfully pull off wild science experiments without the help of any pesky directions. Uh, who needs those? And this portion of today's episode is sponsored by Google. We're smack dab in the middle of spring cleaning season and now more than ever that means we should all be tidying up our online lives as well. Oh, you know how much I love tidying up. Over the past year, less than half of people asked said they feel confident about the security of their online accounts and that's where Google comes in. Every day, Google is keeping us safe online by providing a free, easy to use password manager that's built right into our Google accounts. Google gets how important it is to keep your private information on lock which is why they created these tools to help keep us safe and accountable. Now the great thing about Google's password manager is it can create, remember, and manage all of my passwords and keep them safe and out of the hands of anyone who is not me, all within the security of my Google account. Mm -hmm. I even like to take it a step further with Google's password checkup, which strengthens saved password security and lets me know if any of my saved passwords have been compromised and need updating. It's also free, oh. and you know free, that's my favorite four letter word. Well, I thought that was beans. Nope, bean is my third favorite, right behind free and wood. <laughs> okay, your private information is valuable and weak duplicate passwords are easy to hack. I tell my family this all the yes. time. Mm -hmm. For example, what I love for all of my online passwords would just be the sound that Chase makes when he tears an apple in half, plus the year that I tried my first peanut butter cup. Of course I would, but that would be too easy for anyone to figure out. Right, because it would be Ah, 1983. See? Yeah. Google securely stores your passwords so they remain private to you. You can take Google's password checkup to strengthen the security of your saved passwords to keep your personal information safe. Thanks to Google for sponsoring that part of today's episode. Now we're gonna conduct some science experiments without instructions or adult supervision. It's time for the idea of direction simply disgusts us. So let's hope these experiments don't spontaneously combust us. We're gonna be given some items to conduct a certain scientific experiment and we have to try our best to figure out which of those items we need and how we need to put them together in order to get a specific crazy scientific yeah. result. And there's gonna be some fake out items thrown in the mix uh, to try to throw us off of our game. Now we're gonna start with 50 points. Mm -hmm. And if we can't put the right pieces together in order to make this science happen, we can't ask for lifelines. But all these lifelines cost points, and the more helpful a lifeline is, the more points that it costs. We got 10 minutes to figure out each experiment, and if we still haven't cracked it when the time is up, that's a five point deduction. What we're trying to do is, at the end, still have 25 points or more, because that means that we will win participation ribbons and a special message from senior scientist special. Chase. It's a special, special message. In this first round, you will use some combination of latex rubber balloons, a carton of milk, and oranges to achieve an unexpected result. As a reminder, one of these items is a decoy item that you do not need. And your lifelines are as follows. A message from Science Mike about oh. the scientific principle at play, okay. which will cost you one point. Oh, that's not a lot. I tell you which item is the decoy. This would cost you two points. Okay. And I tell you what result you're trying to achieve, and that would cost you three points. So with that, good luck. So if we remove the oranges, it's both oranges, obviously. Uh, well, Damn. as a man whose thing is, Not pour, is pouring milk. I you, really wanna keep the milk so I can do my thing. You yeah. wanna treat this like a bowl of cereal, don't you? This, this is gonna get blown up somehow. This is gonna get blown up. What else could happen? Let's get Science Mike in on this. Yeah, it's just one point. All you need to do is find the right pairing of hydrocarbons. They're very alike, so you'd think they'd be great friends, but they can really wear each other out. I think we need to mix these two and see what happens. You think the balloons are going out? Based on what Mike said, yeah, because it was like two and we're gonna things be, that seem And we're gonna similar. be left with just milk and oranges? Well, I'm gonna put the orange juice in the milk and I think that it's gonna curdle. I'm gonna put the lid on and it's gonna bust the lid off. Squeeze it in there. See what? See, see this amazing reaction that's gonna happen. There's no way that milk is going to explode right here in front of us. They wouldn't do that. But I'm willing to go down this route. This, this, this okay. okay. 
Boom! It's not gonna no, bust that. Oh, God, you just got orange juice in my eye. I think we gotta remove an item because there's only so many ways that these things can interact. Okay, Stevie, we wanna remove an item. You do not need the milk. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Well, what Mike said didn't make any sense. He said it would wear it out. I think we have to blow up this balloon separately. And then I think we have to do something with the orange that's gonna make the balloon pop because the acid from the orange is going to pop the balloon. Okay, let's blow up some balloons. Pretty good. Give it that. Do you think that then Rubbing an orange on a, you do it, man. Cause I, that's going you're gonna look stupid. Oh, the juice should be inside of the balloon. You blow the balloon up, you get orange juice inside the balloon, you shake it, you set it down, and it will pop the balloon. You can get some juice in there. I don't think it takes much. Okay. Just a little bit. Now. There. Goes a long way. Now see if you can blow that up. Cause what I think it is, I think it. Oh, yeah, that was it. Ugh. I'm starting to hate science, Stevie. Do we need to, we need to get, we're gonna have to go with her third thing. Okay, you gotta tell us what we're trying to do. I will say this. You have already said what you're supposed to do, but you have not done it. It's, there's orange juice that needs to be inside the balloon, and then you shake it. I think that's what it is. So let's do that again, and I won't blow it up so big. And I've got a hole in this one now. Yeah, squeeze it right out of your hole, right into this. Okay, juice is going in. Now what? Now I'll blow it but I can't blow it too big. 45 seconds. Come on, come on. Just a little bit. No, that's not big enough. A little bit more, a little bit more. No, last time it exploded really early in the process. Put oh. it inside, you wanna put it in this hole? Maybe it goes in here. Okay, now I shake it. <laughs> 15 seconds. Ah, dang it. Come on, that ain't doing nothing. Here, put it in here. Put it in here. Put, oh yeah, yeah look at that. There you go, now squeeze that hard. Five, four, three, two, one. We did it! Man! Oh like, man, what you, is guys, it? you guys were so close, but you didn't get it. Let's uh, let's cut to a clip of Caitlin showing you how it's done. Oh, that music is horrible. Oh. See, it wears the balloon out. The very, it's the very first thing that I said, and then we never went back to it. What, Mrs. Wizard over here, so, what did you do? Yeah, so it turns out. You just put a little juice on a balloon? Not the juice, orange peels. peels contain peel. a hydrocarbon compound called limonene. Here, I've got one already. And when oh, limonene right. oil comes in contact with another hydrocarbon like rubber, the rubber dissolved, dissolves, which weakens the balloon and causes it to pop. So you said it, see? you just didn't ever really do it. This round, you'll use some of the following items, a glass, gummy worms, okay. water, and ground cinnamon to reach your surprising discovery. Your lifelines are the same as round one. So your 10 minutes starts now. A, a pitcher and a cup are the same thing. Yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna say let's not use the cup, but if you mix, if you create a paste with a, the cinnamon, cinnamon water. Let's do that. You know what we don't need? We might need the, not need the water. But, or what if, what if we don't need the cinnamon and you just wanna make worms swim? Put some worms in there. Okay, I'm gonna save we're some gonna worms load them if up we're with wrong. Cinnamon. I don't believe we're wrong, but. Can we use our own spit? That would be an item. Okay, so you putting cinnamon on gummy worms. It can't be this simple. There's nothing. Nothing. Kind of... Wow, they taste good. Really? Yeah, taste one. Christmas one. You might just as high as how you catch Santa Claus. You know what? Feels like the most distracting thing here. For us just to eat these and not play the game? The worms. Let's forget about the worms for a second. Mm. And let's make a cinnamon and water paste. And then we're gonna rub it on ourselves and see what happens. You know what? If you add water, that's enough. To cinnamon? You know what happened? Don't add much. Make a paste. Now what? Now, put what your hand you... over the top and oh, shake it. No, you do that. You're like a bartender, man. We, we're gonna have to get Science Mike in on this. I like seeing him in that environment anyway. I think anyway. there's not enough water. He's like, he's trapped, man. All right, let's see Science Mike. The key scientific principle at play here is one that many may mistake as a fear of water. 
But when you get down to the root of it, it's more of a pushing away of that ever so complex H2O. Okay. The cinnamon and the water got to do something crazy. All right. Here. All right. Get. Uh, we need a new glass because this is a surface tension thing. Hydrophobic. That's why Thank he said you, Mike. fear of water. So we're I, not I, stupid, I think, Mike. I think we're gonna take this all the way to the top and then over the top like that. And now, now a gummy worm. You think a gummy worm can float? Maybe with the surface tension, it'll float. That'll be surprising. Right, but uh, hey, that's what we're after, surprise. I think the worms are a distraction, but I'm willing to go down this. Yeah, now you've effed the whole thing up. Okay, just a little bit of, just a little bit. A Look at that, wow. <laughs> no, seriously, look what's happening. That's surprising. It's staying dry. It's not, and, and the more you put on, it's not turning to mud. That's it. Look, look, keep going. Look at that. We've created, this is how. Cin this is like a drink at a bar. Would you like water with cinnamon on top of it? <laughs> this is how islands Because are I could do that. You ever been to Hawaii? This is how whoa, it whoa, happens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, look what's happening oh, there. Up, oh, there's a stream. Look, whoa, look, whoa, 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 whoa. It's all flowing. That, that was it, right? Yeah, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. You guys have five minutes left. You are close. I will say you are close. You, but there is something. Oh, we need to do, we need to stick our finger through the top. We need to stick our finger in cinnamon, stick it into the water. And it'll be dry. And it'll be dry. Yeah, co coat my finger in cinnamon. Gladly. This is how, before wetsuits, this is how the ancient peoples they, swam, yeah, the they, oceans. They, they dusted, them, they dusted themselves, themselves in cinnamon. cinnamon. And then why is why is gore but not wet? Well, he's coated in cinnamon. All right. You want to help? Yeah. And then I want to feel like part of this. Okay. Pushing it down. Doesn't feel wet. Doesn't feel wet. Doesn't Holy feel wet. Mackerel. Doesn't feel Look wet. What happened doesn't, to your finger? Look at. It's kind of wet. That didn't work. See, it's, it's not that wet. It's, it, it's a little wet though. It's not that wet. It's well, wet. I'm gonna give it to you guys. You Is went. That it? You get. You went really deep. Um. But yes, you have you have everything in place that you that you need. So if you didn't go as deep, yeah, see, there you go. Yeah. So um, unlike happily hydrophilic substances like salt and sugar that easily dissolve in water, cinnamon powder is hydrophobic and does not dissolve. So when you stick your finger in, the cinnamon continues to stick to itself while still repelling the water, keeping it dry. Yeah, but have you had like a gummy divers. worm with cinnamon on it? Because y'all should do that. <laughs> All right, for this one, you will use a medley of forks, a lighter, toothpicks, a potato, and a candle to make some magic happen. Same lifelines again. Oh, not science this round? Pure magic? Yeah, pure magic, <laughs> yeah. okay. And your 10 minutes start now. There's it's obviously something in the potato is go, is is like flammable in some way that no one ever imagined. I want to use fire, Fi the, the, the but I don't is, think we need the candle. I think the I feel like the candle is a distraction. That's right. Because if you got say. rid of this, then what's the good of this? But what about? But if you get rid of this, this is still really. But do good. we need forks and and things? Because everything a fork can do, a toothpick can do. You know what? Forget the potato. We can use our lifelines, by the way. Forget. Which one do you want to use? Well, I love seeing science, Mike. All right. Things. Let's see Mike again. The intersection of Newtonian physics and thermodynamics can create an almost magical series of events. Even when you make it with your own hands and see it with your own eyes, it can be mesmerizing to see what the intricate balance of those two principles can do. Oh, come on, Mike. Who, who do you think we are? Newtonian and what? Thermodynamics. So, so I, physical so things heat, happening. Heat and like. That rubbing something to make something burn. I think. No, 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 no. Rub the two. No, we together. have a lighter. But Newtonian is gravity or like inertia. We don't need the lighter. The lighter's a distraction. The lighter is a cheat. We're going to make fire using just these things. We have to throw this really hard at the lighter. We just had to get 25 points. We should get rid of one of these items. All right, remove an item, Stevie. You do not need the potato. See? <laughs> the potato okay. distracted All us. All right, toothpicks. Do you know how sometimes when you blow a candle out, and the and the and the and the fire goes through the smoke. So like, the, you know, th this thing. I mean, we'll just do that just for just. Right, 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 right. So you get this thing going. Okay, it's going. And then you hold on, and now blow it out. Does it need to burn a little longer first? No. And then you light the smoke. And it goes back down and relights it. It means go a little bit longer. <laughs> 
Now that doesn't have anything to do with a fork or a toothpick. If I put toothpicks all around this and make like a campfire, it's the the flame would probably get a lot bigger, which would be that's cool. probably not what they want us to do. It's what I want to do. Uh -huh. Look at that, Stevie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you wanted? Put the no, fork in that. Make no, the I don't want that. Make the fork. In fact, make the put fork it out. Okay. Thank you. So that didn't work. Okay, Stevie, uh, we need your life. What, what are we trying to do here? In this experiment, you will be creating a forking, incredible spinning and balancing act. So the fork, I think, I think we can, like, put the fork. Yeah. So stick the toothpick in the wax. I see people balance stuff on the internet all the time. There you go. Okay, all right, okay. now we're on to something. And now we just heat one side of this. I'm just gonna propel it. No, 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 light the candle. I mean, that's not gonna do anything. But you were impressed that I balanced it on there. Right? Yeah, I'm, I can't believe it. What if we put a toothpick on the fork and then lit it? And it's like a little thruster. You know? And I like that. Yeah, here we go. Now we're got, in business. You still got two minutes. This is gonna work. All right. Yeah, look at that. We've done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at it. It's look gonna, at it. Thrust. It's gonna look start it spinning. This is how rockets work. Is sticking the, the sticking this in the uh, candle part of it? Is sticking the toothpick in? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So see, we we I think we were close, man. I think that what you're doing with the balancing is is right. I just don't know where. The and I'll give you an additional hint. You do have to use both forks. And you have to do it in 22 seconds. Oh, I think you got it. Why would they just stack? I think it's. I think it is like this. Oh, yeah. You got to put that, and then it, it's. And then it catches itself. Oh no. Oh 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 oh. oh, oh. What if you did this? Did the, the, this deal well, right here? Oh, like like, like two, that. Like two youngsters on a date holding hands. Oh, you were so close, but your time <sighs> is up. I bet oh, you Caitlin can do it. You know it. what? The whole thing will spin. <laughs> Yeah, right. let's see what Caitlin's got. Forks on the side. Yeah, see, uh, uh, we got that at the very end. Where does that, where does that go? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, she what? did it. And now she's gonna light it? And now it's, oh no. By inserting the toothpick between the two forks, you create a new center of gravity that can balance on just that? about anything. Then, like as the lit candle causes the air to heat up, rise and expand, cool air quickly follows to replace it and a convection current is created which makes the forks slowly move. How did, how did the fork, how did the toothpick go into the forks? Oh, now we see if it spins. Now the heat from the flame is going to spin. Maybe you gotta get a little, just give it a little encouragement. We just want to encourage you to spin, just a little. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the science that's happening. You right can power a, a small Scandinavian town with this thing. Uh, don't, don't, don't do tappage. No tapping. Hey, and we want to thank Science Mike for helping us be scientists today. Be sure to check out Mike every week on his show, oh, oh. the Cozy Robot Show here on YouTube and also as a podcast. All right, Link, we actually, we did pretty well, man. We were yeah. up for 30 points. We get participation ribbons. There you go. Well, thank Is you, this Chase. Around my amazing, neck? sweeties. Do you want a fork brand? It's too no. small, Chase. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You try, know what time it is. Hi, I'm Mallory Spears and I'm from South Mississippi and I just got my COVID vaccine and now it's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. Thank you, Mallory, for doing your part to protect us all. Now click the top link or click it, you can clip it too, to watch us talk about the dumbest things you've ever believed in good mythical moments. And to find out where the Wheel of Mythicality is gonna land. Bring your favorite mythical moments and characters to life with the Mythical Coloring Book, a wild compendium of fantastical illustrations. Get yours now at mythical.com.